USS Enterprise was the first commissioned nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. She was one of the most iconic symbols of the US Navy from the 1960s to the early 2010s. This gigantic naval vessel played essential roles in many significant events worldwide and left a mark in history. Today, we're investigating the USS Enterprise, an aircraft carrier with an undying legend. USS Enterprise was a pure-blood warrior. During her over 50 years of service, this aircraft carrier played crucial roles in many battles and crises in which the USA was involved. To fully understand the creation of the USS Enterprise, we have to go all the way back to 1945 and examine the historical background. In 1945, the destructive power of atomic bomb gave the US military an unrivaled position. Washington was sure that anyone who saw what happened in Nagasaki and Hiroshima would not dare to challenge the USA. Also, the war-weary world desperately wanted to believe that a total war would not break out again. Especially Washington, who trusted its nuclear arsenal, was initially hopeful that cooperation with Moscow could be continued as in the war years. So, the US armed forces prioritized long-range bombers with nuclear strike capability and the US Air Force, which had been a part of the US Army before, became a separate service branch in 1947. The shining star of this new branch was the Strategic Air Command, or shortly SAC, responsible for atomic bombs, and it grabbed the lion's share of the defense budget. So, the US Navy planned to have new large aircraft carriers capable of operating nuclear bombers, partly to counter the SAC. But the Pentagon preferred the Air Force. Due to budget cuts, the number of large aircraft carriers had decreased to seven by 1950. The outbreak of the Korean War was a blessing for the Navy. Thanks to the carrier-based aircraft, the USA managed to save Pusan. They also proved their values during the counterattack and the Incheon landing. Throughout the Korean War, the highly expensive B-36 of the SAC did not perform even a single mission. The tide had finally turned toward the Navy. It was now a new era called the Cold War. There were countless communist insurgencies and independence movements in almost all former colonial territories. The Soviet Navy began to build hundreds of submarines to threaten the sea lines. Nuclear weapons could not deal with these new threats. Besides, the USSR ended the US atomic monopoly in 1953. It was time to think conventionally again. Naval supremacy once more became an indispensable element of world strategy. In fact, the Navy had worked on a nuclear propulsion system for the carriers since 1946. The naval planners had even considered equipping the forestal class aircraft carriers with nuclear reactors before the first ship had been laid down in 1952. But the Navy had to wait for this dream to come true until the approval of the US Congress for the construction of the USS Enterprise in 1957. She was laid down on February 4, 1958, launched on September 24, 1960, and commissioned on November 25, 1961. Initially, the US Navy planned to have six Enterprise-class vessels. However, due to the astronomical cost of the ship, Washington cancelled the other five. When the USS Enterprise became operational, her pennant number began with CVAN. The letter N referred to nuclear and A to assault. However, the letter C and V had no relationship with the word carrier. C referred to cruiser and V referred to volet, a French word meaning to fly. As you may see, the origin of the US Navy's aircraft carrier definition had a striking similarity to the Russian classification of the aircraft carrying cruiser. Before the nuclear carrier USS Enterprise, seven other naval vessels had the same name. The seventh one was even more legendary than the last one. The 25,500-ton Yorktown-class carrier USS Enterprise was a hero of the Second World War. So the sailors gave her the nickname Biggie. The new USS Enterprise inherited not only the name, but also this nickname. USS Enterprise was the largest warship ever built when she was commissioned. The carrier still holds the record for being the longest ship of the US Navy. 
USS Enterprise had eight A2W pressurized water nuclear reactors fueled by highly enriched uranium-235. Each of the four propulsion plants on the ship contained two reactors and powered one of four shafts with a 29.25-ton five-blade propeller. The nuclear reactor offered many advantages. First of all, large diesel fuel depots were no longer necessary. Thus, USS Enterprise could carry more fuel and ammunition for the aircraft. She could sail 200,000 nautical miles at 30 knot speed without refueling. So, the carrier significantly increased the force projection capability of the US Navy. USS Enterprise had a 20 cm thick aluminum belt armor equivalent to 10 cm rolled homogeneous steel. The flight deck, hangar, magazines and reactor were also armored. The flight deck had a length of 331.6 meters, a width of 76.8 meters, and an area of more than 20,000 square meters. The ship had four 90 meter long C-13 Mod 1 catapults, two on the bow deck and two on the angled decks. They could allow a 36 ton aircraft to reach a speed of approximately 300 km per hour at a distance of 76 meters. The landing zone was 237.7 meters long. The hangar was 223 meters long, 29 meters wide and 7.62 meters high. Its floor area was 20,100 square meters. So, USS Enterprise could carry over 90 aircraft even though she carried over 60 in a standard mission. Four 26 by 16 meters elevators with a 45 ton capacity connected the hangar to the flight deck. USS Enterprise could carry 363,000 liters of aviation gasoline, 9,382,000 liters of jet fuel and 1,800 tons of ammunition. So, she could conduct air operations for 12 days without replenishment. Ready reaction ammunition was stored in armored boxes and transported on sledges to quickly rearm the aircraft on the flight deck. Initially, the US Navy had planned to equip USS Enterprise with the RIM-2 Terrier air defense missile systems. But due to increased costs, it abandoned this plan during the design phase. However, two Octopole Mark 29 launchers for the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow were fitted onto the carrier in 1967. A third one was added during the ship's refit in 1970 to 1971. During the 1979-1982 refit, the Navy equipped the carrier with three 20mm 6 barrel Mark 15 Phalanx Closen weapon systems, one of which was replaced with two 21-cell RIM-116 rams. USS Enterprise had a phased array radar system known as SCANFAR, which had better tracking capability for multiple airborne targets than conventional rotating antenna radars. It also required less maintenance. According to Jane's Fighting Ships 2004-2005 edition, the complement of the USS Enterprise was 5,900 people. The ship had a length of 342.3 meters, a beam of 40.5 meters and a drought of 11.9 meters. Her standard displacement was 75,700 tons, while her fully loaded displacement was 89,600 tons. Eight 35,000 horsepower Westinghouse A2W nuclear reactors provided a maximum speed of 33 knots. The first big test of the USS Enterprise was the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis. But thankfully, the tension ended without causing a total war. USS Enterprise was an essential threat to the USSR, so the Soviet Navy was her shadow. On February 13, 1963, this chase began with a TU-142 tracking the USS Enterprise of the Azores and this cat and mouse play continued until the very last day of the First Cold War. In 1964, USS Enterprise, alongside the nuclear-powered cruisers USS Long Beach and USS Bainbridge, participated Operation Sea Orbit, the around-the-world cruise of Task Force One, to demonstrate the strength of the US Navy's nuclear fleet. They cruised 30,565 nautical miles, in other words, 56,600 kilometers. Throughout the 65-day operation, the convoy did not even refuel for once. USS Enterprise performed 1,590 sorties. 
Her aircraft stayed in the air for 2,372 hours and sent 240 bombs, 2,766 rockets and 12,520mm rounds to their targets. In 1965, USS Enterprise performed its first battle mission. The US Navy deployed her to the offshores of Vietnam and she launched its first strike sortie in the same year. The A-4 Skyhawks of the USS Enterprise made a grand opening with 125 sorties and unleashed 125 tons of bombs on North Vietnamese targets. Nine days later, the number of strike sorties increased to 165. On January 14, 1969, an aircraft start unit overheated the rocket load of a parked F-4 Phantom II, causing an explosion which began a chain reaction across the flight deck. During this disastrous incident, 15 aircraft were destroyed, 27 people lost their lives and 314 sailors were injured. The explosion created a great hole at the center of the flight deck. So USS Enterprise sailed to Pearl Harbor for repairs and returned to the seas on March 5, 1969. Until 1973, USS Enterprise was assigned to regions outside Vietnam only three times. She was dispatched to Korean waters twice when the North Koreans captured the US intelligence gathering vessel USS Pueblo in 1968 and shut down an EC-121 Warning Star in 1969. Also, when the Indian Navy blockaded Eastern Pakistan, which is today's Bangladesh, during the Indo-Pakistani War of 1971, the US Navy sent USS Enterprise to the Bay of Bengal to give political support to Pakistan and demonstrate that Washington did not recognize the blockade. After the Vietnam War, the US Navy deployed USS Enterprise to the Persian Gulf in 1988 for another combat mission. During Operation Earnswill, the aircraft carrier escorted the tankers against Iranian and Iraqi attacks. She also participated in Operation Praying Mantis after the Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate USS Samuel B. Roberts hit a mine. Her aircraft sank one Iranian corvette and severely damaged another. The aircraft from USS Enterprise performed over 700 sorties and unleashed 360 tons of bombs against Taliban forces during the first three weeks of the 2001 Afghan war. As an iconic ship of the US Navy, USS Enterprise also found a rightful place in popular culture. When we say USS Enterprise, many will naturally think of the starship USS Enterprise of Gene Roddenberry's unforgettable Star Trek. At the story development stage of the series, the creators planned to give the name Yorktown to it. However, they quickly realized USS Enterprise symbolized the nuclear era. This name was the best choice. Directed in 1986 by Tony Scott, the movie Top Gun had three leading actors, Tom Cruise, F-14 Tomcat and USS Enterprise. USS Enterprise was inactivated in 2012 after over 50 years of service. She was decommissioned on February 3rd, 2017. The first commissioned nuclear aircraft carrier also became the first decommissioned example of its kind. The US Navy has decided to continue the legend for a ninth time with the new Gerald R. Ford class carrier USS Enterprise. But the eighth of its name will always be remembered as a legend. Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.